a police sergeant from Sunrise, Florida, has not been arrested after he assaulted a colleague, a female police officer, by grabbing her in the neck. She tried to pull him off of somebody. He takes his pepper spray, goes into the back of a police vehicle to spray somebody who's already in handcuffs. A female police officer, somebody also at the scene, grabs him by the belt, pulls him out. He turns around and grabs her by the neck but he hasn't been charged with the crime. Anybody else who would have done that to a police officer would have already been arrested and handcuffed and charged with a number of different felonies like assault on a police officer. This is what the scene looked like. We're going to break this down into a couple different clips. First one is going to be the scene of the officer going back into the back of the police cruiser. There's a gentleman who is in handcuffs being arrested and the officer, Christopher Police, is going to be the person who charges back in. Let's watch. Now there's no sound here, but you can see this is the body camera of Officer Christopher Police, and he is going back in there. The person is in handcuffs, leaning back, doesn't seem to be an active threat, and he's going to go and spray him. Let's watch that one more time. You can see there are about five officers there, one on the other side of the vehicle. He is now scooting in, doesn't seem to be kicking or anything, and so Officer Christopher Police is going to spray him. Now, as that's happening, another officer is going to be behind him and is going to pull him out. Let's watch what that looks like. This officer is going to grab him by the belt and slowly pulls him back out. And he doesn't like that. He turns around and grabs her by the neck, just like that with his left arm. You can see on his body cam, he's now grabbing her by the neck and then shifts off into the collar. Let's watch that one more time. Slow motion, definite neck contact before it gets down to the collar. Now you can see him going back to the car and he's now screaming at her and walking away. She goes back up. All right. And so now when you start to analyze these types of incidents, you know, one of the things that's very important on the human body happens to be the neck connects the head to the rest of the body. Pretty important connection point right there. And so the criminal statutes often will criminalize anything that is hampering the neck. Now, I did poke around very briefly the Florida statutes, and I didn't see anything like that in Florida. But in Arizona, if you're impeding somebody's breathing or, or, or choking off their their blood supply to their head, that's going to aggravate the penalties. Not sure if that's the case in Florida, but it certainly is relevant. If you're going to be assaulting somebody, there are different types of assault and some versions can be a lot more consequential than others. We can see a different angle here of this officer clearly looks like he's got his hand on her neck in this area here. And then he sort of rolls it off into her shoulder as uh, the, the ordeal unfolds. We can see that here. Watch this a few times, neck, 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 and then pulls it down right there. Either way, highly, highly inappropriate. If anybody else had done this, of course, that would be assault on an officer. That would be something where uh, you'd very likely be charged with a felony, arrested right there at the scene and brought into uh, the police station. Now, of course, that did not happen here because this is a police officer. And I certainly understand, you know, people getting hot in the middle of uh, the performance of their duties. We've all been on sports teams where somebody gets agitated and throws their helmets. Heck, I've even done that. But that's not what's happening here, right? These are professionals in the middle of the performance of their duties. We know that these are ultra high risk situations. We've had many situations, George Floyd, Derek Chauvin, where officers will either be killed or end up killing somebody. Oftentimes it's somebody who is innocent who uh, shouldn't have been killed. And so very, very consequential situations where you expect people to be uh, high performance minded, not snapping because somebody is pulling them off of somebody. So let's take a look at what the police chief has to say about that. Is are going to be any consequences as a result of any of this or does he even care? Here's what he says. I, I, I find this behavior to be uh, disgusting. Um, I think the video speaks for itself. Oh, really? I find it to be the inappropriate and unprofessional. Oh. Because um, what he did is he escalated the situation. Mm -hmm. with, uh, so this, the pepper spray was out yep. and uh, aimed at the suspect. Yep. I, I'm very proud of this police officer. She took some definitive action. I can only imagine what she must be feeling.
yeah, she probably is feeling like she just got assaulted by a colleague and you just admitted that it was disgusting and unprofessional and completely uncalled for. And so we know that he's sort of been placed on, uh, you know, inactive duty, on desk duty, essentially. Are there going to be any other consequences, though? Because this was the scene. This was one officer literally assaulting another officer by choking her in the throat. That maniac is still out there going to be pepper spraying other people in handcuffs in the back of police cars. And so, well... What's going to happen with him? Who knows? But the public defenders out of the 17th Judicial Circuit, somebody named Gordon Weeks, his office is drafting this, and I think it makes a great point. He's saying, uh, Dear Chief Rosa over at the office of the Chief of Sunrise Police, we just heard from that guy. Yeah, it's disgusting. You know it's very inappropriate. He says, okay, dear chief, I commend you for acknowledging the disgusting behavior displayed by the sergeant, Christopher Police when he placed his hands on the fellow officer's neck in an aggressive and seemingly unlawful manner. As you know, it's a violation of Florida law to commit battery upon a law enforcement officer while engaged in the lawful performance of his or her duties. Battery is defined as actual and intentional touching or striking another person against the will of the other. Take a look at the statute, he says. As you noted, Chief, the video speaks for itself. Facts in this matter are uncontroverted and clearly captured on video. Yet this incident occurred on November 19, 2021, some 56 days later, and this officer has still not been held to account. He writes, I respect and understand the complexities of a criminal investigation. However, I do not understand why that same deliberative and considerate process that causes Sergeant Police to remain on desk duty and not be arrested for his actions is not afforded to everyone else in this community. As of the writing of this letter, 410 individuals have pending cases in my office alone for violation of that same statute, battery on an officer. Of those individuals, all of them, all of them, all of them were immediately arrested right on site when the alleged incident occurred based on the probable cause as observed by the arresting officer. For those people, those arrests were not labored over. They didn't take 56 days. They weren't given a high level of scrutiny that is being displayed here in Sergeant Police's matter. It seems that all others except law enforcement are immediately held to account. 56 days go by, Officer Police still just roaming around over there, even though he put his hands on a fellow officer's neck. Battery, 410 people out of this guy's office also have the same charges, and they got arrested immediately. And it's weird because at that scene, we saw there were three or four other officers right there who witnessed that. If that had been any other person not wearing a badge, that person would have been immediately arrested. But they watched their fellow do it, their pal, their colleague, their partner. No issues at all. And so the public defender, Gordon Weeks, says, I am compelled to bring this sobering data to your attention to illustrate the two systems of justice that exist in our community. It appears as if law enforcement officers engaged in wrongdoing get different treatment than everyone else. He says, well, that can't be the case, is it? Chief of police, tell me that's not true. Please. Says, I urge you to continue to stand tall against misconduct that tarnishes the work of good law enforcement professionals. But I also encourage you to move more expeditiously when holding officers accountable for their transgressions and give that same deliberative process to all others. I compel you to bring parity between a law enforcement officer's misdeeds and the acts and those for whom they serve. Thank you for your immediate attention to this matter. I'm available to discuss. Give me a call. Gordon Weeks, public defender out of Florida. And he's absolutely right. Standards are standards. If they're going to not give the benefit of the doubt to any other citizen who goes through the criminal justice system, then why should they get that privilege? They shouldn't. Now, I'm all in favor of people making mistakes and being afforded the opportunity to mitigate those mistakes, to rectify them, to correct the wrongs and move forward. I'm not advocating that any officer just get un needlessly, unnecessarily fired or removed from the force. That's not what I'm arguing here. But I am arguing for equal standards of justice 
And if they're going to arrest any single person who even looks at a police officer wrong and charge them with aggravated assault, their own should be held to the same standards. What do you think about that? I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comment below. And we're going to cover this case along with many others. And so I hope you join us in that journey and subscribe before you get out of here, because I would love to see you on the next one.